Now, who remembers seeing this image on the news some time ago now? It was back in 2009. This was Miracle on the Hudson. It was a fantastic movie where that aircraft became a glider once it ingested a bunch of geese. And uh, Sully, Sullenberger landed beautifully on the Hudson River. It was incredible. But a less known story that I believe reveals a greater feat of airmanship and certainly a greater level of customer service was the following year with QF-32. So QF-32 was captained by Richard de Krepney, a Qantas pilot, a seasoned veteran, an ex-Air Force pilot, uh, and that's Richard there with Sullenberg. And what happened was QF-32 in 2010 was on a flight from Singapore to Sydney. I really encourage you to read the book. And the flight had just taken off it was just approaching 6,000 feet. And a few minutes after that event, Alan Joyce was in the back of his Qantas limousine with one of his other senior executives. And that other senior executive was looking at his, his iPhone. And he turned to Alan and said, Alan, do you know why our share price is falling through the floor? Now, the reason their share price was falling through the floor, and Qantas now has just achieved record profits. Amazing turnaround. This wasn't the cause of their problems, by the way, it's just the problems in the airline industry. But at that moment in time, what had happened was Qantas wreckage had showered down on a village in Indonesia. And the reason it had happened was one of the Rolls-Royce engines had a small, a small tube that started to leak. And that leaking oil caught fire and caused an explosion, an uncontained explosion, which is incredibly rare in aviation. And I don't know whether you know this, but the Airbus A380 is the most technologically advanced civil aviation aircraft ever, as well as being the biggest, and it's all fly-by-wire. There's two wiring looms that pass through the belly of that aircraft, and one of them was severely degraded. The, pr the plane lost about 65% of its roll control. It's lo it lost its, ab it its ABS. There were 200 punctures in the fuselage. Richard de Krepney was later quoted as saying, the explosion was like a cluster bomb going off beside the aircraft. Now, because they were only at 6,000 feet, the plane wasn't yet uh, at an altitude where you would get depressurization. Planes are pressurized for between 8 and 12,000 feet typically. So there was no depressurization event. Also, incredibly fortunate was there were 185 punctures in the wings. And in big aircraft, the wings are largely filled with fuel tanks. So the fuel tanks were punctured. Most people don't know this, but uh, the fuel tank caught on fire. But the thing that causes explosions is actually vapor, not fuel. You can, you can fill a glass to the brim with petrol and light it very safely. You put, a, you put half a thimble of petrol in a glass and try and light it, it will explode. So because the fuel tanks were full, even though one of them caught fire, it just blew itself out, out gently. Uh, Avgas is actually kerosene. It's got lower thermal properties. Inside the cockpit was an amazing situation. Not only did they have Richard de Krepney as captain, he had Matt, his co-pilot, sitting beside him, but they had three other people on the flight deck. They had a flight engineer, and A380 is one of the few aircraft that still has a flight engineer on board. But then they had a captain checking out Richard, watching him fly to see whether his license should be pulled. Qantas is the safest airline in the world. Every six months, they just watch their pilots fly. Any bad habits, they, they take them off the flight deck. So there was a, a checking captain watching Richard, and then there was another checking captain checking the check captain. And I think we all know that too many cooks can spoil the broth, right? So having that many big brains on the flight deck where a number of them outranked Richard was a potential problem. But before they had pushed back from the aero bridge back on the ground, Richard turned around to those more senior people than him and said, guys, we're not confused about who's in command, are we? <laughs> so once that plane pushed back, he was the command pilot, he was in charge. And the three of them worked as a team incredibly well. They had endless warnings going off. I'm not going to go into the whole story, but basically every minute they flew, the plane was becoming increasingly imbalanced because fuel was leaking terribly out of one side of the aircraft. They had no ability to pump or transfer, transfer fuel anywhere else. They had to get it back on the ground. 
Big aircraft are not designed to land full of fuel. That's why they dump fuel if they ever have a problem before they land. So it was coming in fast and heavy and they had no ABS. They did their calculations and they thought they had about 100 metres of spare runway, which is not much. They managed to get the plane back on the ground. That's what the uh, wheels and tyres looked like. The brakes were all white hot. They managed to get the passengers off the aircraft. Incredible act of teamwork, of skill. But this is the story for us in business. This is really the analogy. When they got the plane back on the ground, Richard, who's, who's up there, who's on, on left of screen, he went into the passenger area and he stood up on a chair and he said, can I just get everyone's attention? When you fly Qantas, you fly with a premium airline and you have every right to expect a far better level of service. Right now, there's a thousand Qantas staff mobilized, seeking to get you hotel rooms. We're going to struggle to get your bags off the aircraft. We're going to give you money or vouchers so you can buy toiletries and underwear. But right now, I want you to take out your mobile phone or a pen and a piece of paper, and I'm going to give you my mobile phone number. And if you do not get treated by Qantas the way that you believe you deserve to be treated, I want you to call me. Have a guess how many people called him. Not one person, not one person. But Richard understood that the leader is responsible for the culture in their business, that the behavior of the leader determines what everybody else does. And that's why whenever he flies, he walks the entire cabin. Not to puff himself up and say, look at, look, look at me, look at me, I'm the captain of the aircraft. He does it because he knows that the cabin crew will provide a better level of service if they know that the captain is walking around on the plane. So it was just amazing. They're the five gentlemen concerned. So let me just talk about some, some lessons I think out of all of this.